I was nervous. I was freaking out. <laughs> were you? Literally, <laughs> first <laughs> season, didn't think we were going to a championship. I was like, oh, this is sick. Oh, my gosh. There's fans. There's TV. There's, whoa. I threw up before the game. People, I everyone was never, throwing up. And I was I like, what is happening? I never thrown happening? up. The Players Pod is proud to be sponsored by longtime partner WIS. As your go to accounting and growth partner, WIS understands the power of teamwork and they're ready to take your business to the next level. To learn more about how WIS can help you succeed, head over to WIS.com. That's W I S S.com to accelerate your company's journey today. Welcome to the Players Pod, where we talk to the biggest names in the game about the untold stories behind their success. I'm Kelly O'Hara, and my guests today are my Washington Spirit Girly Pops and national team teammates, Trinity Rodman, Emily Sonnet, and Andy Sullivan. Trinity is the reigning NWSL Rookie of the Year and the youngest player ever drafted in the NWSL. Andy Sullivan is a former number one NWSL pick and NCAA champion who currently captains our Spirit Squad. And Emily Sonnet is a World Cup champion, an Olympic bronze medalist, bronze medalist, and was the winningest player in the league last year. Spirit friends and girly pops, welcome to the show. <laughs> hey, Kelly, thanks for having us. <laughs> okay, so everybody who's listening and it might not be watching like wherever we put this digitally and visually, this is the first interview I am one doing live for the Players Pod and also first time I'm interviewing multiple people at once, I think. Which is really fun. Do you like it? Legendary. Um, I'm having a good time so far. <laughs> it's going well. It's I all think. downhill from here. Um, yeah, exactly. So, how's everybody doing today? Yeah, How right. are we? Who's going to answer first? <laughs> Anybody having a great day? Anybody having uh, a bad day? I'm doing great, Cal. Um, Kelly and I drive an hour uh, <laughs> to training every day, and we drive an hour <laughs> after training every day. So it'll be. We talk a lot, so I'm not spent, sure what, what. Today might be the longest time we've spent, we'll have spent together. Yeah, but looking forward to it. Good. I'm glad you don't get bored of me. Well, we're going to just jump right into it right now. We are in the Challenge Cup, about to have our season opener, but we have made the semifinals of the Challenge Cup um, somehow. And um, curious how you guys are feeling about this year's Challenge Cup. Anybody want to rate their performance so far? Individually? Sure. Team-wise? I don't know. Whatever you want. Um, I don't know. I feel like this year, with the chaotic year we had last year, it's just like building off that and trying to like find our identity. And I feel like Challenge Cup has been like filling out like how we want to press, how we want to play, when we want to score. When? I think <laughs> <laughs> that too. That true. When we want to win. <laughs> Oh my um, god. Yeah, but um I feel like it's been good. We're learning a lot. Um I don't know. I think it's been exciting because we've seen a lot of different players on our team step up and in different roles and I feel like every game has been energizing in a way because someone stepped up and had a huge performance. Um someone's gotten an opportunity, so I feel like after watching a game, then I come watch training and I'm like, oh, we're so good. And we have the potential to be so good. Obviously, we're still learning a lot, like Trin said. And there are so many pieces we need to be sharper with and put together. But I'm so excited about where, about where we're going to be towards the end of the regular season. For sure. And for people listening, a lot of people know Challenge Cup came out of 2020. That was the first Challenge Cup, also called the COVID Cup by a lot of people. Um this is the third year, I guess now, the league has done it. It's turned into this preseason tournament. Curious how you guys feel about it being a preseason tournament. It's on it. Um, yeah, no, I think we talked earlier. The only thing that excites me about the Challenge Cup, it's another trophy that you can win. Mm. So I think that kind of brings the competitiveness early. Um, I think you have to be smart loading wise players but I think it's a great I think when Andy's saying earlier you get to see the whole entire roster essentially play because there's so many games back to back to back with on top of that with traveling um so yeah I mean having a preseason tournament I think it's really good but I think it's also an opportunity to be 
competitive in the beginning of the season and win another trophy for the year. Anybody have negative thoughts about the Challenge Cup being a preseason tournament? I could go off a little bit. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> go off. Um, I think the timing and the format is not the best. Um, obviously, in 2020, it was kind of like what we had to do. And I think we're forcing it a little bit to keep it around. I think it needs to be updated to either be shorter. Um, or spaced out. Or spaced out throughout the, the season. Yeah. Um because I think we're calling it a preseason tournament, but it's also, like Sonnet said, a chance to win a trophy. And I think it's unclear what it really is. And people can spin it both ways. Um, but I think it's been very frustrating to have three games in seven days starting off the season. It's um, also, I think, quite dangerous. Yeah. And we've seen that along the way. Um, so I, I think it needs a lot of revision. I also just think, like, Wednesday night game... In March, you're not in DC. You're not going to get a lot of people at the game because it's freezing, um, and other cities across there. I have like so many things I could go off on, but um, I think we went into it with like the preseason approach, and now we also are like, well, we could win, so let's push it. Um, but now we're playing Seattle on That's Sunday that. for the regular season opener. Play them on Wednesday for the Challenge Cup semi, and then we're play them again in May at Seattle. So we'll be done playing Seattle three times in one month and yeah. won't see them again for the rest of the season. So I just think that is poorly planned. But we're working on it. Everyone's working on it. Snaps from Trent. Period. <laughs> period. How many times is Trinity going to say period in this episode? 18. Seven. If, this was, if, this, <laughs> if we turn this into a drinking show, that would be the word from Trinity. Period. Period. Or um, facts. Or facts. Or it's giving. Um, Great, great segue. Let's, let's, Trent, I want to talk to you. I have some Trinity questions to kick this off. I figured I'd put you in the hot seat first. Um, <laughs> last, period. Uh, last season was historic for the team, but it was also a very special year for you. It was your rookie season. You basically not skipped college. It wasn't on purpose. You were going to go to Washington State, play a season, and then, um, enter the draft that season didn't happen so you went into the draft um ended up rookie of the year and had an incredible season which like massive hat off to you what would you say was like the biggest learning curve that you came up against last year I think not getting complacent not that I ever did but I think it's easy for like using the excuse of like being young to like be like okay um me accomplishing this is like enough mm. or like this is more than like a regular 19 year old would do or an 18 year old would do so I think trying to improve in like every aspect and not just being okay if I had a good practice and I finished one good like goal like I think it's just like building off every single thing and like setting a standard just as high as like bets I think and um that was hard for me because I was hard on myself but at the same time like I think I gave myself too much props when I did like little things well I think I wanted to keep building on that and I think that was I don't know the biggest thing for me I think it says a lot that you have the ability or the yeah the ability to to see that you did that because a lot of people wouldn't especially yeah. young players I think would not have that realization or recognize that and then try to change it. So I I think that's a great point. And I think it's real it shows that you're you are quite mature as a person, as a player, to have to be able to have that um recognition about yourself or like self-awareness. What was your biggest surprise? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> like how nervous I got to touch the ball during preseason. Mm. Like I like I've obviously like you're always confident on the field. Like, this is your sport. You're confident, like, playing. But, like, always going into, like, new environments and, like, playing with older people and, like, always, like, kind of going up. Yeah. It's, like, I was surprised at how scared I was to have a bad touch. Like, even in passing patterns. I remember in preseason. Oh, God. Like, well, I literally, like, when Richie was yeah, our coach. To be well, fair, the passing patterns were very confusing. Well, no, I think, too, <laughs> I wanted to, like, impress, like, older players. Yeah. So much so like if I was in a Are passing pattern. Are we the pattern older with, players? Yeah. <laughs> We're old. So. If I was in a passing pattern with Andy, I'd be like, oh shit. I'd like purposely Shoot. stand next to you too, <laughs> and, like, pressure and be like, left foot, That's open up. I know. Like, I'm like, I was really annoying. I'm like sorry. I would be in my head about everything. And like, that's like something I've never done, obviously. Like, 
I don't know. But yeah, I think just being scared to mess up. And I've obviously learned that like you're like you're gonna mess up all yeah. the time. But um that was a big surprise. And I think too another surprise was like how well not like I fit in, but like how easy it was to like come into this environment with mm. the people I was surrounded with. Like I was I don't know, I was kind of expecting to like be a little like outcast and like not talk to everybody and like they already had their clicks and like they've been doing this for a while. So I think I was like nervous because I was like, oh, am I going to like have friends? Like, am I going to be doing me for a couple years? But just like how well everyone like brought me in and like how comfortable I felt like so quickly after I'd been playing. Yeah, that's another one. It's fine. Sana and I were just the ones that felt like outcasts. Yeah, really weird because we <laughs> we felt like the outcasts and I did not have that experience until month four. <laughs> okay, well, so to talk uh, a little bit, Sonnet and Andy... Sorry, Emily. She wants to be referred to as Emily now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, how did you guys feel at the beginning of last season? You, you were coming in, Andy, you were coming in, captaining the team, been with the Spirit since you have been drafted, which was 2018. Um, Sonnet, this was your first season, or last season was your first season with the Spirit, and you had gone from Portland, won at Portland, traded to Orlando, didn't play for Orlando because of COVID, came here. So how were you feeling, Andy, going in to last season? Like what was your initial thought as preseason started? It feels like a long time ago. I don't really remember what my initial thoughts were because preseason alone was like 10 weeks yeah. um, and we weren't really seeing other teams. It was just uh, wasn't the most fun preseason. Um, but I think that this is the first season on the spear where I feel like we're returning the same team. Mm. Pretty much every year that I'd been here, it felt like a completely new team every year. Um, so I think I was kind of thinking back to, okay, how can we get everyone on the same page um, quickly and gel as a team because we had a lot of new pieces. Um, so I think that was kind of my focus during preseason. Sonnet? I think you and I talked about this a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, I think in middle of present, we were at um, national team camp. We came, we flew into West Palm Beach, and yep. we had a few s training sessions. And I was like, Kelly, <laughs> where is the dis the defensive structure? <laughs> like, where it's not being taught, we don't go over it. That is my whole entire job <laughs> is defensive structure. <laughs> my bread and butter. Um, <laughs> when I was getting traded from Orlando, I. I worked really well with my agent trying to find a team and I had spoken to Kelly and Kelly was really interested in coming to Spirit and I was like, oh, that seems really cool. I came, I, you know, I ended up getting to Spirit. It was awesome. And then I, I like, obviously like begged her to come to Spirit. And I was like, Kelly, yeah. <laughs> what have you told me <laughs> to come what, to? What type, type of disaster did you get me involved in? I was a couple weeks into the season, maybe like a month or two actually, because it was like once game started, I think. I was, we were driving to practice and I was just like, oh my God, like I did sauna a disservice here. Like I convinced yeah, her to come here and it's a bit not what I thought it was going to be. Like it's a bit of a disaster. That was my initial preseason thoughts. Yeah. Okay. I remember saying that to you guys too, because you guys both reached out to me like, what do you think? <laughs> and I remember at one point being like, I hope you feel like I didn't lie to you, you to get you to come so, here there was just like, so many so much going on yeah. that like a lot behind the scenes that we didn't really know and then like we get here and then i think we come kind of talked about this earlier and i do want to share that story about when oh. we sat down as a team and this is in west palm beach west palm beach and we said and we we're kind of like oh, what was who it was about it wasn't even about like oh we want to win the championship it was like when we win the championship michelle's gonna take us on a trip Oh, yeah. And I looked at Kelly. I go, we I think like, we went back to the room and I went, I went, do, like, do they know how hard this is? And we don't even know how to defend in the box. <laughs> like, was, like the nine doesn't even know their defensive responsibility. Like, how are we going to win? Like, do they are that are they talking about a championship? And then we met and then we met again. They were like, hey, Bora Bora or Mexico. <laughs> and we were like, like what? Like, let's figure out like pressing first <laughs> before so, we plan the trip. It was so funny. I was like, so. Yeah, well, after preseason, I didn't really know how the year was going to go. Yeah, we didn't, and um, it was it was definitely interesting. Um, and we're going to go through a little look back of twenty twenty one season. Um, so the first 
big thing that happened was Richie being let go. That happened early August. And Andy, I'm curious what you felt when that happened. And do you think that that having a coach let go in the middle of season prepared us for the, like we, that was, I feel like domino number one. And when that happened, I was like, oh, well this is, you know, we've hit not rock bottom. Like we were like in a hard spot because we, our coach's gone. Right. We could get into like, if we were actually in a bad spot because Richie was gone, but did you, did you think that it was just going to get even more crazy as the year went on? Or were you like, Oh, I don't think I thought that would be the craziest, the craziest thing. Like I felt like that would be hard and like, you know, how are we going to get out of this? Um, And we still had all the other logistical issues that were already going on before then. So I thought those two things paired together would be our, our biggest challenge, but little did I know (laughs) there was, there was more around the corner. Yeah. Okay. And so, so Richie happens and I just want to be clear. I'm not saying that it was a bad thing. He was fired by any means just to get that out there. Um, that's what needed to happen. What, what were you going to say? Understood. Yeah. Okay. I just like felt like I like kind of Fact. made it seem um, that wasn't the case. Um, Richie gets fired. Chris takes over. We go into September and we have our COVID forfeits. Not one, but two. That was tough. I mean, I was really angry about that. Yeah. Let's talk about that. You want to talk about that? Yeah, that's part of it. Well, I don't know. It was just so – not a lot of answers. We were asking questions. Not a lot of answers were being given to us about the Portland, Seattle, and then they happened to be the two teams above us yep. that we were third place. And I don't think a lot of people were – I thought more people would freak out about that. And it was more like, oh, no, you guys just like, oh, I'm kind of like, this could happen to any team, mm-hmm. right? So was it fair? I'll never know. <laughs> but, yeah. like – you guys not I oh I, I, was, I, I was that pissed. might have set me over the edge where I was just like that is like the last thing you we have this 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 and now the league is not being crystal clear about why the forfeit or what what's happening so it felt like we were being made an example of as like a I think because things were contentious with the league and the spirit and because um I felt like we could just kind of be bullied at that point. And people were like, it felt like we were just getting ganged up on. Um, And even if it was fair, I just, I felt like there wasn't a clear, there wasn't clear communication why there had to be the two forfeits. Yeah. And other teams had had um, COVID COVID issues. And so, yeah, that I think everyone was. No one else in Europe was forfeiting because of COVID. So I'm just kind of like, where, where did this kind of come from? And I don't know, it could have been, the six points or just if you take it one win and tie for us to actually make playoffs. So it could have been huge. So when that was happening, and again, it was, it was back to back games. We were in, right. We were in Portland. We ended up leaving without playing the game. The game was set to be rescheduled. That was our assumption. We come home. We're supposed to host a home game against Seattle. And then that game gets canceled and forfeited and then after that we're at national team camp and because i think right after the that seattle game we went to camp and at camp is when you i remember being in the meal room (laughs) and andy comes up to me and saw it and is like shows i don't even know what did you show me like a tweet or like a i don't remember some sort of message or something yeah i don't know i i feel like it was a public Thing. Like, I feel like it was a tweet because I feel like so many things happened last year publicly for us. And that was another part that made it crazy for our fall was just like so much was out. I think it was public because I think I showed some of the uh, Portland players yes. and they go, oh, yeah, we already we've already heard this. Got it. Yeah. So we find out Portland game that was supposed to be rescheduled has now been canceled and we forfeited. And I remember losses for both yeah, forfeits. Okay. I remember being at the table. And we haven't given up three goals in the whole year. A, a single game. Yeah. And I I I was furious. 
pretty sure I slammed my fist on the table and flipped a table and walked out. Yeah, there. flipped a meal <laughs> table and walked out. And then we went and talked. Yeah. We got on a call with the team after. Yeah. And it was explained what was already public knowledge yes. and no further explanation as to why or whose decision it was or any logic. Do you it feel all. like any this is a toss up for anybody do you feel like those forfeits was a turning point for our season yes yeah I think it was when we were finally all be able all able to be together again yes. because so in Portland we were separated. we were separated um and like flew back at different times and we're isolating at different rates and things like that and then the same for once we were all back, then we were training separately. So we weren't wow, even all together. Yep. So that was two weeks apart. Then a bunch of people know. went away for same international camp. duty. Yeah. And then we came back. And I think because people were able to go home for international duty when we came back, we weren't, weren't all together right away. So it wasn't until like match day minus one. So we had like that, four we weeks. Had a chat. Yeah. And we all sat together and we were just like, and I think we were also uncertain about how we were all feeling about it because we hadn't been together. And yeah, I think I remember some people were like, are you guys mad at us that we right. had COVID? And then are you this? And I was kind of like, no. Yeah, yeah. No one's mad at anybody. We just all like want to come together. Which I think was really cool about the team because people could have been, been, been pissed at each other. Yeah. And then no one held it against each other. Or and blamed, then, like played the blame game. Right. I yeah. think for me, I know, like, once that happened, I knew, like, there was more to come. Like, I really? knew You're that's like, oh. when I was like, you just, okay. like, poke the bear. Well, because my first season, I wasn't expecting, <laughs> like, I wasn't expecting anything, like, with COVID and, like, I don't know. I, oh, you're season. saying more to come, like, crazy stuff yeah. off the field. Yeah, I ahead. was like, okay, like, we're in for, we're in <laughs> for something. And I think, I don't know if other people felt that way, but I think it was easy for us to like come together and be like, okay, like we need to go. Like we need to. I think if there was a moment for everyone to hop on the bus <laughs> and be like, okay, like it, like there's going to be more bumps then I think that was after that meeting. Yeah. We were kind of like, it doesn't really matter if we, it's like, this is the bubble. This is the group. It doesn't matter the front, whoever's doing what. Mm -hmm. Like this is, this is who's actually winning. Actually yeah. This playing. is the only consistency we can depend on. It's us. Yeah. And that's where send it came from. And we we're like, we just I don't even know really. We're sending. I know you just like it's started yelling it. Chat. Yeah, uh -oh. basically, someone said yeah. it. I think it was Paige, Paige and Dorian said yeah. that they had been talking about it, and they were kind of like, "Well, we we have to be here, and we can be with each other, so we might as well go all in for each other." Yeah, we might, as well, you know, and forget everything else. Yeah, we were like on the on the bubble. We were very much in a playoff race, but yeah. it was so tight in the mid section of the table last year that it was like, we got to go for it every single game or season's done like we can either go for it or we can just roll over and play dead which i think a lot of other teams would have rolled over and played dead 100%. after after two forfeits yeah for sure and all the other frustrations so it was sick um yes so richie covid and then on top of that in the background and not very background in the very public sphere was our ownership battle and Michelle is now the owner. She's made it very clear. She doesn't want to harp on last year, any of that. Um, so I feel like it would be poor form to go into it. Um, but, but, <laughs> but, sorry, Michelle. Um, no, I just, I, I guess it's kind of like at any point, well, I, I guess I know the answer to this. Like, I, I was very much so like, I cannot believe this is happening the way it's happening. Very public, covered by the media, that sort of thing. So does anybody want to talk about it at all? If not, we can just move on. <laughs> no, nothing to add. I just feel like everyone felt like there was like no control. Like we yeah. had no control over anything. And that was the most frustrating thing is like we were just going to practice every day and then like going on Twitter. Like, <laughs> yeah. like well, there was no structure. To, there I was think no it was tough to sit with it. It's like, how we are all these other people getting this information <laughs> that and we just can't get a stinking email. 
right? Well, it was like, who was going to send the email? Exactly. That was the problem. I know. And that, you know, thing, like kind of thank God for Michelle. And we're like kind of going through this and like logistics are kind of like going out. <laughs> you can't get a stinking email. I'm just like, I've never been on a team that operates like this. <laughs> like, it's just an email. Yeah. Like just. You don't even talk to you don't, you. don't have to come to training and look at me in the face. Just like send me an email. Yeah. I think that was like the toughest. Just being like. We and we obviously made it very clear as a team that we thought Michelle was the best candidate. Um, and that wasn't that was very it, I think it was easy for some players. It was very difficult for others to be public in that um, proclamation. It was scary. Yeah. Yeah. Because at the time, Steve's still on the team or part of the team. And, you know, this guy's paying people's paychecks and to go against authority is never easy. But I do think that, and I've seen it happen before, but because we did it as a team and we stuck together, and I, I don't think anyone really went outside of the team and spoke in a way that wasn't consistent with like what we were feeling. We stuck together, and to me, that's, I think, how we were able to, one, be successful on the field, keep it that way, but also to weather that because it continued through the off season into the preseason of this year. And obviously um, Michelle is now the owner and we're moving forward. And I think that she is going to do incredible things here. And I'm so excited to have her as our owner. So I'm curious for y'all, what are you like most excited about with this new chapter of spirit and the ownership? Good question. I don't know. I think, Michelle, like for Michelle, sky's the limit. Yeah. Like I feel like she wants top for us with everything. And I didn't feel that way before. So I think that's the biggest thing. Like she shoots for the stars. For sure. I think Michelle's hungry to learn about mm. soccer and how the operations work and how can we make this kind of like what you said earlier. I think it was earlier today. Like how can you make this the, the, shine, the, the North Star? The North Star yeah. for soccer not just women's soccer but yep. soccer and you you this is their their destination to come here and i think michelle being a successful businesswoman knows one again how to learn educate and then kind of getting it done yeah and delegate too I feel and delegate like that's what she's yeah she's so yeah, brilliant. that's really exciting for sure and i think she's showing us how to like lead and do that in our our sphere but also post-career like hey, if you're running a business, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. And um, like you talked about education, not just for current things, but for us post-career. Yeah, shout out Queen Kang. Queen Kang, baby. What a, what a lady. Um, no, seriously, she's great. Um, all right. 2021 playoffs and championship. Who's excited to talk about that? I'm hyped. Um, if you can't tell from my voice, <laughs> uh, so, bum, bum, bum. so we boop, boop. so we host we host against North Yada. Carolina. <laughs> yep, that all those things. Do like a beat. You got it. No, you keep got going. It. Okay, no, we're not gonna rap. No. Okay. Um, host against North Carolina, or we host North Carolina first game of the playoffs. Okay. Go to overtime. Yes. OT. That was hard. That was a tough game. <laughs> got a blister. <laughs> Trin got a blister. We thought she <laughs> got shot. Like basically, we were like oh Trinity's, uh, like has lost a lung on the field, but no, it's just a blister. Like you couldn't like go on. <laughs> the hardest five really minutes without you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We were like, you in, you out. Which one is it? <laughs> you in, you out. Because this out, five minutes, a man out. down stinks. <laughs> um, win that game. Go to Seattle. Play Seattle. Get scored on in the first two minutes because I'm an idiot and Sorry. yeah no it was both of us <laughs> there's some other people involved whatever um but we win 2-1 mm -hmm. yeah two pull, one. pull off that win I think Seattle now plays at is it Lumen Stadium Lumen field. because Spirit owned their field after last year I think we won I saw it. that on Wikipedia I yeah think. we were there yeah I think we own it now officially um <laughs> He's like, yeah. can confirm yeah I think we bought it or something um <laughs> Then we go to Louisville, 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 Louisville. 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 and um, to play the Chicago Red Stars in the NWSL Championship. Um, how did you guys feel before the game? 
Yeah. What are you laughing about? I'm how like, did you? How did you? you how yeah, did I can't you? Wait, I how can't did you? How did was Trinity feel? How? I, I, I was nervous. I was freaking out. Were you? Literally, <laughs> first <laughs> season didn't think we were going to a championship. I was like, oh, this is sick. Oh my gosh, there's fans. There's TV. There's whoa. I threw up before the game. People, I everyone was throwing never, up, and I was I like, what never is thrown happening? up from off being nervous. I literally was so nervous. Oh, we know. Ash also we, threw up. Yep. It didn't even come out. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, there was people throwing up. Oh, yeah. There were, like, <laughs> literally. So, you and Ash. Oh, Hatchie was sick. I know, but she was actually sick, I think. She okay. was like, She was <laughs> sick. I was throwing out names. And then, so, I yeah. just remember you guys, so, I think it was Sonnet, it was, it was just Sonnet. like, you guys, it's just a soccer game. Like, yeah. and came, thought, was this was this before was the bef- game or it was it after we came in for more for warm ups into the locker room? I looked at Kelly. It was after warm ups. Like we were in our yeah, jerseys we're like and getting ready. Are, like, I looked at Kelly. I go, we out. did not come here to the last game for everyone to fall apart. <laughs> I go, this is. I go, this is not happening. I go, everyone, <laughs> relax, relax, throw up, game. relax. <laughs> we're about to go Get play soccer. <laughs> Oh god, Enough. it was so funny. You guys. We were in the bathroom, not on the field. <laughs> yeah, we're we're lined up to walk out uh for the anthem and Trinity's not out there and neither is Sanchez. And I'm looking at Sam cuz Sam stands in front of me, Sonnet's behind me and we're like are they coming? Like are they not going to play? Like what's happening? Like, and yeah. Trinity runs. We start to walk out. Literally, start to walk out. Trinity I literally am I'm like is are runs, they walking out yet? They're like, "No." <laughs> Run, is, runs, runs and joins the line and we're like dying laughing because I'm just like uh, I mean this is it this, this, is, where, this is what we're about to go on the field with does things though yeah. like, I think that's when things like that were happening yeah. we would just lean into it exactly we were like well, welcome to the spirit. <laughs> correct. Like, correct. Lee showing you're, up. You're out. Yeah. Sanchez doesn't make it at all until uh, team picture before kickoff. <laughs> And we're all, I'm just, we're dying. Like, we, I, there's a picture of me, you, and Sam talking for the game, and picture. we're cracking up because we're like, Sanchez isn't out here. You were just throwing up. We have to play a soccer game now and try to win. Like, what? Every successful athlete and entrepreneur knows that setbacks, mistakes, and losses are all a part of becoming a champion. Like a great coach or teammate, WIS helps business leaders find the vision and strength they need to succeed. Whether it's international taxes or advice around staffing, mergers, and finance, WIS is ready to assist your company in its championship journey. As proud supporters of female entrepreneurs, WIS not only sponsors the Players Pod, but they also sponsor the Just Women Sports brand new Ballers Market, a first-of-its-kind online marketplace for female athlete entrepreneurs. You can check it out at justwomensports.com slash ballers hyphen marketplace. To further this mission, WIS is giving away an unreal prize package of Ballers Market gear and JWS swag. To enter the giveaway, tweet at both Just Women Sports at Just W Sports and WIS at WIS LLP with the name of a coach who has helped you succeed either on or off the field. And then head to WIS.com, that's W-I-S-S dot com, to learn how WIS can help you turn a setback into a winning opportunity. What's going on, everybody? I'm Dawn Staley, and I know you all have been hearing me talk about UFOs, but I wanted to really drive it home for you how much I love these recovery slippers, and I'm just so excited to share them with you. Believe me when I tell you, once you try these, you'll never wear another slide a day in your life, especially if you got knees and ankles like mine. But I'm not stopping. UFOs allows me to stay active, walking my boy champ, working out, and of course, coaching. Each pair have this incredible technology and footbed that cradles your arches. And UFOs are developed with intention to reduce stress on the body and help you recover. And it works. Trust me on this. I know a lot of athletes who wear UFOs regularly and love them. But I also know a lot of nurses and teachers who use them. They're that good. Check them out at UFOs.com. That's O-O-F-O-S dot com. They have a ton of different styles but all with the same foam and footbed. They are seriously life-changing footwear. Um, oh, I did it. Oh, I never did. It's like a gem from last year that I just... I was just like, this is not how it ends. Oh, yeah, you were like... I, I just kept thinking, like, I can't believe this is what we're walking out on the field with. People throwing up right now. Like, what? Um, <laughs> so, game's wild. <laughs> Game, oh, game's wild. We get scored on right before half. First half, sorry again, guys. Didn't block that cross. Um, we go into the locker room, one zero down, halftime. But I feel like we were all pretty like 
confident. I yeah. Or were you I still think we out? all knew like, okay, we're going out there and we're about to score. Yeah. Like it was like no. Yeah, we're There's not letting this talk happen. about. We knew first half was not it. And like, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't play that great the first half. I think yeah. it was like there were good moments, but it was yeah, it wasn't it. consistent. But I think because. It had happened so many times in the second half of the season. Like even in Seattle, we got scored on the first yep. two minutes, and I remember thinking, like, okay, good thing we barely really, we got that. more more time. Like I was just not worried, and that's crazy that even getting on scored getting scored on right before halftime is such a difficult time yeah. because you don't have time to like adjust. And yeah, I don't. Th I think we came into the locker room and we're totally not sure. throwing up. Yeah, we were probably a little. We were more totally confident. not throwing up at halftime. <laughs> we were totally going I out feel there like to win we it. We didn't really say much <laughs> during yeah, halftime. Really like I don't, I don't remember talking to anybody. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about uh, pregame. It was we did not have a pregame speech at halftime. Do you remember the pregame speech of the <laughs> of the final game? Yeah. Uh, what, was, what movie quote was it? No, it was like a bunch of random stuff, like a bunch of powerful women. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I and we were that. all like looking around, like what? And I'm like, <laughs> in the locker room. Like, we're like, yeah. that's great. <laughs> what does yeah. this have to do with anything? <laughs> okay, turn it off. <laughs> Bless Chris. He loves a good movie quote. Yeah. And, and th there's been some good ones. <laughs> yeah. There's been some that some people have no idea. And I think we kind of en enjoy now. Yeah. It's like, a, what's it's the like, surprise going to yeah, be exactly. today? Yeah. Like I loved Willy Wonka the other week. Mm. Which series is he into today? Um, Hopefully Killing Eve. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. It's Killing Eve because Son and I will eat that up. <laughs> eat it up. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> okay. Haven't watched. Anyway, yeah. Haven't watched. Highly recommend. Um, second half. Andy gets PK. <laughs> Andy slams it home, no questions upper, asked. Upper ninety, there is not a, there's not a two hand dunk. Nobody is thinking this might get saved. No, just kidding. It goes under the keeper's arms. Um, it was not a top penalty, that's for sure. It wasn't, but it worked. Yeah, so I mean, if in spirits I, in, right there. Spirits. If it had been a little bit higher or a little bit slower, she would she have saved, saved it. it. Exactly. And so it was perfect. Just the <laughs> right. <laughs> it was. It was in this medium rare. In the sweet, just medium right. rare. Right. Yeah, it, but it's funny because I wasn't nervous yeah, for was taking the penalty. Okay. Um, because I think throughout the season, I knew I was taking them, and Did like, you black out at all when you hit the PK. Oh gosh, I think I remember seeing like her hands it, going yeah, down. just <laughs> barely graze under her arm, and I, I make sure to touch the net before I. Celebrated. Pumped. Turned around and did your classic Andy scream. This pump. Lose my mind. I love that. Thanks. But so much. I have really it's Thanks. really tough seeing the highlights of it because I'm like <laughs> We were just we were just talking about it uh yeah, before this. She's yeah. like, I hate watching that highlight it's, because it was a bad PK, but whatever, it went in. That is a, a bad is a PK. Goal, yeah, exactly. There's no going in bad PKs. Um I remember watching and being like, Oh god. <laughs> okay, we're good. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh one one, we go into overtime. Um, the most unlikely thing happens. Rodman to O'Hara back post. What was I doing up I there? The I don't know. Like the like biggest one too in the, in the year. <laughs> yeah, I might have passed it to you and then <laughs> passed it back across the field. Um, I what did you remember see? when Trinity hit the ball and in were the you, box? I, and I, yeah, everyone was like, was like um, "Where is she going with um, that?" And I was like, "Kelly's there." I, I promise. Oh, what that big target on the backside. <laughs> That big old noggin. That big old noggin on the backside. Yeah, Kelly. But there. as you hit it, I was kind of like, oh, like, I roll. What a waste. And then <laughs> she stops. As it's getting closer, I'm like, oh, oh. And then, who is that? She could go it's all a bird, the it's a plane. way. <laughs> it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Kelly. But your reaction your celebration was, was, yeah, my favorite. I don't even know if it was a celebration. It was like pure shock. No, what? I was, yeah, I was in, yeah, I was. I was on my in. knees at halfway. I was like, <laughs> see you later. I'm saving my breath. Thank yeah. you. Stay. Let me get water. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um hilarious like again just classic par for the course for the year right like just i don't know i still i i laugh about it i think it's funny um i also my celebration was like also laughable because i was yes i was in shock 100 percent um i remember telling anna sauce on the way back i was like I'm cramping, so I need I need help over here. Okay, so everybody. I know. Were you cramping? Work but, hard. But I was cramping before overtime started. Did you cramp? Yeah, same. I was in like the 80th minute for sure. Well, I was going to say you cramp like every game. So <laughs> not, <laughs> not that exciting. <laughs> I'm Emily Sana and I've never cramped. Yeah, it's wild. Anyway, um, I'm Trinity and I need like. I cramp today. <laughs> I'm cramping right now. Actually, we're cramping right now. Stress? <laughs> oh, she is. Um, so we win. Huh. Amazing. Uh, amazing. Like, honestly, 
people ask, and winning a World Cup, both of them have been incredible, but, like, winning the NWSL championship for me was, like, close. That sounds silly to say, but I, like, cared so much about it. I wanted it so badly. There was just so much drama with it. Yeah, there was just so much that went into it. But, like, I was so... Happy yeah, you like wa- you like wanted it bad. I wanted it. Bad. I I, we too. wanted it bad, but like you wanted it bad. <laughs> yeah, I wanted people it real bad. didn't think like nobody thought we were gonna win. And I think when people underestimate the stuff we went through, it's like okay, like we're gonna prove you wrong. That's I how I think. think people I'm didn't like, think we had a good roster. I remember after the uh, I don't know if I told you this uh, after you told Seattle, me everything. I told you, I <laughs> you actually tell you time. everything. <laughs> um, after Seattle, I did the media, and they were like, you know, on paper, Seattle is like by far the best team. And I said, I hate when people say that. and I said, I said, oh, I'm, I go, I'm really confused. Like, have we, have you guys done like your homework on this team? They're not being called up internationally yet, but there's at least yet. seven to eight girls who, women who can play for the U.S. national team. I was kind of like, the, I think player for player for the NWL. Like, yes, you might have international experience on Seattle, but this team's really good. And then did I call it? We have seven girls on the going up to the you national team. It. I mean, I think I called it. Spoke it into existence. Um, does anybody have any Sorry. good stories from celebrating? The TikTok. I mean, obviously the TikTok. Viral. <laughs> Vi- <laughs> I was if you haven't seen it, <laughs> go check it out. Yeah, I don't know if I have. It was really fun to have our families there. Yeah, um, that, that was really special. Like families on the field too, because I feel like we didn't get to see our families as mm, much through the yeah. year, and then my sure. mom was and to hang out with each day. other's. <laughs> Besides the I saw my mom. <laughs> I love that. But to like see and meet each other's support systems yeah. in that moment after a really difficult year, I felt like was really special. That was actually the first time I've been able to celebrate on field with friends and family. What do you mean? Like I've never, I mean, at the World Cup, you don't. They can't come down onto the field. You celebrate oh, after. Mm. But like having them, I remember doing the stage, whatever, trophy presentation and then turning to the corner and you see all these people like running and you're like who's the stampede of people people coming out it's like oh my god it's friends and family um yeah and an ally who was a league sponsor last year gave us opportunity to bring two people to the championship which i thought was very cool um but yeah i think having them on the field celebrating mingling with everybody's friends and family and just like enjoying it there and then we obviously had a big party Afterwards, um, locker celebration, locker room celebration. Locker room celebration was fun. Yeah. And then you two went to Australia. <laughs> and then a short 12 hours later, we were on a flight to Australia. Yeah. That was tough, huh? It was really hard because I felt like once the wheels touched down in Australia, I was like, that didn't happen. Mm. And we didn't get a chance to like really soak it up at home with the team. And I think even my celebrations were tampered because I was thinking like, well, I have to play Australia yeah. in a few days. So... Um, yeah, I don't think we properly celebrated, no. and we I still th- haven't properly celebrated. So yeah, you still have to do that. So we have so to we do still, it again. On the to do so list, we have to do it again so that we can properly celebrate. Yeah. Double down for sure. I think that was such a bummer that it was championship game straight into a international break or FIFA dates, right? Yeah, and it was yeah. just like as the spirit, we didn't get to celebrate as a team back in DC with fans yeah. together as a team. And it was right before Thanksgiving, too. So yeah. people wanted to be at home for Thanksgiving with their families and then they they weren't going to come back. Exactly. Um, so I think it was international window and hol- start of the, you know, the holiday season. So I just really lifted yeah, up. spirit thing. <laughs> Win a championship. Don't celebrate it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend like it never happened. No. Um, so, OK. Uh, great year last year. <laughs> Minus all the drama. Um, but that's what made it great. So 2022. NWSL season about to begin. Um, big year for the spirits, I believe. Backs, as Trinity would say. Um, and our, <laughs> baby, oh, that's it. Uh, our sponsors at WIS know that mentorship is key to building a more inclusive and positive sum world and that a great coach can make all the difference in somebody's career. So I want to ask each of you, as we head into this season, what's one piece of advice you received early on in your career that has stuck with you today? I really, I'm actually really interested in this. How early in career? Could be four years old, Andy. Four years old? Oh, different. The first thing that pops into my head is when I did my ACL at Stanford. Um, and a strength coach said to me to always ask myself, okay, what what can I do? Mm. And 
because there were so many things that I couldn't do and that I wanted to be doing that I couldn't, but it was just helped. And I use it all the time now. Um, so, you know, good. what's going on in the situation? Okay. What can I do? And sometimes you can do nothing. Like sometimes you can rest. Sometimes you can distract and just, but phrasing it in that way helps me shift it to what I can control and what's it within my power and to like be present and do that and do that the best that I can. So that is the first thing that always pops into my mind about like the best advice you've received in your career. But I'd have to think harder about when I was no. younger. No, I love that. Okay, That's cool. Incredible. It's great advice. Uh, when I was at Portland and I, it was like five months that I was getting called with the national team. Um, they worked with me a lot and there was a book they made me read is with just purposeful practice. Mm. And actually what, what are the, so whether it's a five yard pass or a certain type of pass texture, like can, how many times can you do that? Okay, it's not five out of 10. That's your, that's your construction zone. That's your zone. Like you have, now, how can you get that to nine out of 10? Okay. Now, now move the distance more and more and more or having a moving, moving target. So the purposeful training, I've never actually thought can I make it that specific to me instead of just going out and training? Um, and then working with my sports, like clo and closing and opening every single training. Um, not the training, but actually the individual spots. I don't know. I think work rate isn't taught. I think that's a huge thing. Um, cause at the end of the day, obviously like I'm always going to work to like get better at certain things on the field. But I think at the end of the day, like you do as much as you're able to do. Like if you're ha like I used to beat myself up so much for having a bad day. Like if you have a bad day and you're working hard and you're doing all you can for your team, like that's all your team can ask for. That's all you can ask for within yourself. So I think just not, I don't want to say like taking it too serious because like I want to improve every day, but like not dwelling on mistakes when you did the, like the best perform to the best of your ability. So I think that's really stuck with me because I used to like cry a lot about my perform. I'm not even kidding. I used to be really hard on myself. Like I would get really upset if like, like I had a bad game. Used to be as in like last year. Yeah. Oh. Like I'd cry. Like if I had a bad game, like I, not even like disappointed with myself, just like more like my team wants more from me. Like mm. they know I can perform better. Mm. So like I'm not giving them what they've seen before, mm. which is like that. But like <laughs> that's how I feel. But I, I don't know. That's helped me a lot to just like reset and be like, you're you're good. Just focus on the next thing. I, don't know. I like that. That's really good. Thanks. Connor? Uh, repeat the question. Um, <laughs> advice. What's one piece of advice you received early on in your career that has stuck with you today? Um, understanding purposeful training, purposeful practice, and whether that is specific to uh, – my position or how I want to be training, um, but also working with sports psych um, early on a few years ago and now opening and closing each training so you're not dwelling on, or kind of like training, not dwelling on a terrible training. It's a, it's a new day. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> important. I feel like that's so important in, especially professional, but even in youth, like you, if you take your training, if it goes poorly, off the field it's just like there's really no or even games and using yeah. use, using that as a learning tool to be like oh this is just where i need to improve it's well, always always way to get better i think trinity's point is such a good one because i think at a young age i felt like if i wasn't super upset it didn't seem like i cared mm -hmm. and so people would see that i would upset and they'd be like oh it's good that you cared so much so it became this like unhealthy thing that so you're faking it no i wasn't <laughs> faking <laughs> but i would like <laughs> So you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> but you. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Continue. No, 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 it's true because. But like the beating yourself up thing is very prevalent because, and you think that's what motivates you to get better, mm. but you can do it in a healthier way. And For I sure. think we're all reaching that point now. And uh, some days it's easier than others, but. Um, wanting more for yourself while not beating yourself up mm. at the same time. Yeah. Um, so last year. We were underdogs by a large margin, I would say. This year, we have a target on our back as the Spirits. So, um, Trent, how does that impact your mentality going into this year? Um, I don't, in a weird way, like I feel like it doesn't change anything. Hmm. Like I have, I think it's more like people underestimating is when I want to like 
go at it harder or like prove them wrong not go at it harder because like i don't know hold everything. it like this sorry <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> talking with my hands um abracadabra <laughs> um, oh you gotta start over okay you're not changing anything I don't feel like it affects yeah yeah um i don't think it affects the way i play like no matter what you're still there to do exactly what you were there to do a year ago when you're going through all this stuff and people don't think you're gonna win like you're there to do the same thing and at the end of the day it's all about performance like you are there to perform and give your best performance every single game so like for me i have the same mindset if not an even better mindset especially to like being in with a national team and seeing how it is there it's like i'm like hey get my freaking horse like i need to go like i need to focus on this 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 and like go so i think yeah i don't know Sorry, I'm rambling. No, I love it. Um, Sonnet, you're the only player here who has ever been on a team trying to defend their NWSL title. So what do you think is the biggest challenge in terms of managing expectations and staying focused on the goal? Hmm, I haven't really, really thought about my, my Portland days in, in a while. We... I thought what was special about that group, and I think what we can see maybe replicate here, when, say, you win the Shield and you try to win championship, don't do it. Say you win championship and then you have, then you have this target on your back. How can you keep every day almost the same where you're not, you're not thinking about the end goal too much? Mm. We had a lot of – I think we spent a lot of time of each training being really good, and that sounds so elementary, and then each game – Let's finish this game. We want to win this game. We want to win this game. Obviously, we didn't have challenge cups. Or we didn't have like this, like three day games like this early on the season. Um, but I think that was can you replicate that championship mentality every day? But I think if you get so stoked on the back to back part, then so along the way you kind of get lost. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Um, so I think that's the only thing I can really think that stands out to me is what we would have come together as a team and said and then try to replicate from the next year. Yeah. When I was at Stanford my senior year, our assistant coach came to me and was like, do you want to have an undefeated season? And I was like, doesn't everybody? Like, obviously, yeah, that's something we've talked about for a long time or since I've been at Stanford. And she was like, do you want to know how? And I was like, sure. You have like the secret sauce. Like, what's <laughs> yeah, the don't. recipe? Um, and she looked at me and she was like, you just have to win – the game that is in front of you. That's it. I know it sounds so it sounds so it, simple. It sounds and it sounds dumb. and it sounds silly like to say obvious, it. But yeah. But you can't look so far yeah. so far ahead. Because well, I don't know why I'm going back to Stanford, but we would people would always be like, oh, we want to be national champions. And it's like, okay, but to get there, there are so many steps along the way that you have to focus on. And you can't just talk about wanting to be a national champion. You have to do what's in front of you for the day. And like that's something that I feel like is very similar to what you said, and I think it's a great point. Thanks, Kelly. You're welcome. Um, Andy, you've been at the club the longest. <laughs> How would you describe where the club is now versus when you got here in 2018? I could write several books about. <laughs> Somebody each get her year. book deal. Somebody get her a book deal. Um, I be mean, a seller. Current, <laughs> currently, like the club is in the best situation now than it has ever been since I've been here. Um, I think t 2018 was an extremely difficult season um, for me and for the spirit. We won two out of 24 games. Holy smokes. Um, Did not know that. Yeah. Jesus. And I think that was, was that, your that was my rookie? rookie year. And it coming from a school where you won pretty much almost every game and then going to a team being a high pick having a lot of pressure um and we had a good team like I enjoyed the team but like we just weren't clicking um our coach was let go towards the end of the season um and so 2019 was kind of this up it was exciting Steve came in there was a lot of excitement about that Richie came in um and then obviously like COVID happened, a lot of uncertainty about the NWSL and Challenge Cup, everything. Um, and then last year we just kind of did a recap. So it's been very up and down since I've been here, but this is the first time I felt like a professional, um, which is sad to say, 
but also exciting. And I'm trying to view it positively. Like, okay, now we have a positive uh, professional setup and like now we can really build and become the North star. Um, and I think that means a lot to me as someone who is from this area, who watched this team growing up, like I want to build that so that people in this area, like they know it and they see it, especially like the young girls who potentially do want to play soccer in the future. So I feel like I have this very intense emotional attachment to the spirit. And so to experience it as a fan and then a player. And like now I finally feel like we're laying the foundation for a positive future. Love that. And I agree. Season hasn't started yet, but we've already created a rivalry <laughs> with Gotham. Um, do you think NWSL needs more rivalries? Like fun rivalries i feel like the only other Fun. one i love I, the portland seattle yeah, i, I, like I other, lived for those games well, i was about to say that i feel like the only Fun. other one is portland seattle besides now maybe us and gotham do you think there's any other ones i think that la san diego well, has probably. potential has gotham beat us <sighs> as gotham probably not oh no i think they did in preseason last year in challenge cup last year no didn't they yeah okay yeah i think they did did they and they might have during the season. I, well, I think anyway. when you guys were away. They haven't beaten us. It was at Segra. So so we only lost, we only lost one game last year. Um, <laughs> which yeah, one? Um, so <laughs> is there a point of winning a championship if you can't talk shit? <laughs> this is a JWS question. Am, like, I am not a shit Andy talker. Is, Andy is slowly... <laughs> Andy is slowly backing up. What do you right mean, now. Andy? <laughs> Shocker. Um, yeah, be yourself, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a public shit talker. Um, but like all power to you, if that works for you, I will observe quietly and I will back you up, but I will not participate, participate publicly. Yeah. I think it's, there's a difference between shit talking and then responding. Interesting. I, I Tell me more. I, I, I won't ever understand like st starting it. Mm. I agree. And then not. Un <laughs> but if like, someone, yes, if, 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 I think if someone it, starts, you're allowed a response. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that response is like you're just. Why like, else do you put it on? I there? personally feel like the best response is no response. Silence. Silence. No, is playing, playing, yeah. and then destroying them on the field, like smashing that. them. That's yeah. why I responded, and then and then you actually responded, you which them. is like, <laughs> kudos. Yeah, it's great. I was Double like, down. I was like, oh, that was dumb you down. you know we're playing Gotham this week. You're like, oh. Shoot. <laughs> I was like, that came up really well. I know. I was like, it's Twitter Battle Royale of NWSL. Um, good times. Nothing but laughs here because Trinity scored two goals on them. Um, all right, national team. World Cup 2023 is around the corner. Um, how are you guys balancing your focus on national team and club? How are you? <laughs> yeah, tell us how it's done, Kevin. Uh, Legend. <laughs> I mean, I feel like like I've always done, but I, I will say, not to say that I didn't care about club in the past, like please do not take whoever's listening to this, whoever is out there, um, <laughs> all my old teammates, coaches, I obviously have always cared about club, and club performance to me dictates how you play on the national team, if you should play on the national team, all that stuff. But... I now with the change of, you know, we're paid by our clubs, we have a responsibility to perform for our clubs. It's not just national team. Like you've seen, I've seen how the NBCL has slowly in this league and national team, there's slowly become not a balance, but it used to be if you perform at the national team, that's all that mattered. Not all, but it's most of that. I'm rambling. Basically, to me, I care so deeply about being successful on this team. And I and to me, that just means I have the opportunity to day in and day out practice and train with some of the best players in the world, thankfully. And my performance and like my habits here will only carry will carry over to national team. And that is what is important. So it's like a winning mentality here translates to a winning mentality on the national team. And I think that a lot of times it used to be winning mentality on the national team. People would go into their clubs, bring that. And I think that that's happened. But my thing is like, we win here. We're successful here. We will be successful or I can bring that to the national team. And we also have so many players on this team now that are in with the national team that the success here, the mentality, the habits here will translate over there. 
cool. You guys have not even <laughs> said has something to say. Well, I think you gave me a book, oh, yeah. uh, The Power of Habit, correct, last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and reading it has helped me understand you and understand the national team and understand myself. And like, I think that when you say World Cup 2023, like, I like shit my pants. <laughs> and so I like, know. Well, I can't. Like, I'm just trying to get there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and, oh, yeah. and no, I, I think. Again, we have to qualify first of all. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so for me, it kind of goes back to like, okay, how can I get better today? And like you said, like opening and closing every training. And if I open it and close every training with like, I have to prove I'm good enough to make the national team, like that's not going to work. It's just going to be too stressful. So again, like breaking your big goals down into smaller goals. And I think you hit it on the head where it's like, what are my habits? Do I have a winning mentality? Like, am I switched on? Like things like that, shaping it into more of a process rather than is this is this moving my stock up or down like where do i stand like all that stuff which we all go there sometimes and you have to learn to shut that off and realize that it's not helping you and again shift your focus back to the little things and what's going to make you better and what's going to put you in the best situation to if you're lucky enough to make the team like for sure will pay off you guys got anything for me i was gonna say i was gonna say it's really unique that you can play for a team that everyone wants to get better. And I think that maybe this wasn't the this wasn't the spirit team in 2018. Like maybe it was, you know what I mean? But now we have a lot of people who want to achieve this goal of making qualifying and then going in with the national team. So almost using spirit as a launch pad, but it into the national team where you can do the small things right and you can feel successful in your training environment that you know duplicate and you can copy and paste into the national team environment all right who's the funniest person in the spirit locker room dorian minus me (laughs) i knew you were gonna say something like that you think dorian saucy sonnet okay no i know i'm the funniest because dorian has said that i'm the funniest that is true sonnet is the funniest on the team so minus me who is it so they're saying you're wrong (laughs) is what's happening so yeah they are wrong dorian's funny too dorian's hilarious hatchie's funny when she talks hero is pretty funny dorian oh tara's funny but like unintentionally. Yeah. Like she's just Sanchez I think is du- kind of funny and I hate to say that too. <laughs> she is. She is. She is. She's like, Sanchez like, is, yeah, Sanchez is wild. A lot of funny she's like mean funny. <laughs> oh my God. He needs, you need someone. Dorian's like a observer. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry. Right. Who is the worst pregame playlists? I guess we would never play a bad pregame playlist. I feel like Aubrey would have a terrible one. <laughs> <laughs> no? I love that that is Aubrey shout out. Oh yeah. Wait, we did, we actually didn't talk about um, you helping her become MVP of Yeah, quick story. Uh, <laughs> national uh, championship game. Aubrey had the MVP of the game. Um what is it? The uh, champion NBA cell championship. NBA cell championship yeah. and I had glanced the ball backwards mistakenly in the, like the the 122nd minute. 122nd minute and she made the save and she was the MVP. <laughs> Okay, anyway. Next question. Um, <laughs> all right, so no, no. okay, Aubrey ha- would have the worst pregame playlist. But she has the best saves in the <laughs> NFL championship. True, 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 so it evens out. <laughs> um, Dorian is our locker room DJ. Shout out to Dorian. Andy has gotten on the aux cord lately. It's been good. Yeah, it's Fire. been really good. You guys would have no idea how much that oh, means to me. She, she is absolutely you, beating right now. On? What do you mean? Like, like what playlist? playlist? Just like, oh, yeah, I tried to Are sense. you just queuing? You're just going through? I feel like Touch by Little Mix, a.k.a. the Pussycat <laughs> Dolls, really set you up for success. It's not the Pussycat Dolls. I know, I'm kidding. She, oh. I told the, her the day that she came into the locker room, she was like, I want to hear the Pussycat Dolls. And I no, looked, I said, I want to hear Touch, touch by, the by the Pussycat Dolls. And I dolls. looked up Pussycat Dolls, Pussycat Dolls. And I was like, Kelly, there's no song called... And was, and she, yes, yes, there, there is. is yes, there is. And I was like... What and she goes, just, oh, what, it's by what an idiot. Mix. I had just seen the the <laughs> album cover. Kelly Perry, what And it looked like a Pussycat Dolls album cover, because I know what that looks like. I don't know. Anyway. Um... All right. Can someone please explain the braids? Not, there's no explaining for the braids. What do you mean? Wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you like to know, weather well, boy? Well, explain it. <laughs> Tell him, Trent. Hold, hold the microphone up to your mouth. There you go. You got it. So uh, Kelly has always been very optimistic about braids. No braids. Do I want to try it? Will I look 12? So then Will I? one game, I was like, you have to do it. Well, it was the practice before. I was like, you better do braids tomorrow. You're like, okay. Did braids, and you, you were like, I don't want to be alone. So then, me and Ash hopped on. Well, Ash used to do them. This is the game. Well, so I training. wore them in training oh. because I needed to see how I felt playing in braids, and then I 
decided I'm to I'm kind of bummed that they haven't come back. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. How many goals will Trinity score this year? Ooh, I like this question. Oh, we talked about this earlier today. Yeah. How many goals do you, how, how many goals do you want to score this year? How many have you scored now? Oh. Wait, what? How many have you scored now? Well, it doesn't count. Co- doesn't COVID count. cup doesn't count. Oh, it doesn't count? Yeah. So you so want to have a number, 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 and we all say the same how many time. Did you oh, God, yeah. Score? How many did you score last year? Seven total. Okay. In the regular season, not counting what she's done so far. Regular you have season. how many games in the regular season? 22. Okay. I have my answer. I do too. I do too. Three, two, one. 18. 12. Did you say 18? Oh, I said 18. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I undershot 18. it. 18. I said 12. 15. I said 12. I said 18. Bro, if you're not scoring 15, like you're, you're scoring 12 you minimum. No, I love. And you're assi- that. you're assisting eight. And you're assisting eight. You're assisting. Oh, you're assisting. Oh, you're assisting eight. Yeah. What What was I your name? Like and you'll up. ride off. I expect sunset. you and Hatchie <laughs> to both score 15 goals this year. That'd be sick. <laughs> Tied for Golden Boot, and then Kelly sneaks it. And then I score the game winner and they just give it to me because like I'm the tiebreaker. And if you're listening to this, Kelly will be having Golden Boat this year. She <laughs> wants it bad. <laughs> she will okay, okay, every okay, cross. Um, another question from our partners at WIS. Who's the biggest mentor that's had an impact on your career? Uh, Person. Doesn't mentor, like human. No, yeah. Um, my college coach, Steve Swanson, he was oh, on. That's such Steve a good Chelsea. answer. Um, good. He's great. He uh, is great. His, I still talk to him, so. Oh, that's that my mentor. All right, Andy, Tren. You first. I mean, like speaking in present time right now, I would honestly say you guys. <gasps> like I know that's like, three, I'm like one. not even kidding. <laughs> I well, pick one. I know, oh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm eliminated first. <laughs> one of pick one and pick one and why isn't it Andy? <laughs> <laughs> They didn't pick that up. Uh, That's really sweet. No, I'm serious. Like, you guys have helped me, like, mentally, like, on the fields, off the field. Like, everything you got, like, and speaking to you guys, like, having so much experience and going through the same things. Holding a microphone (laughs) microphone to your mouth. Like, teaching me things. (laughs) It's helped me. So. And I know you probably didn't hear any of that because it was over there. The way Andy was beaming about being good on the aux cord, that's how I'm beaming about this. That means a lot. Are you beaming? I love shaping you into freaking beaming, babe. Stallion. <laughs> uh, I feel like it changes. Um, you can say Drew. Oh, that's a good answer. <laughs> you want? Um, but I. But we're not going to. I don't it. think I would say Drew. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, um, if you're watching this. To be honest, like one of my first mentors was Chris. Um, because like when I was in high school, he was one of the first people who showed me like purposeful practice and brought me around older veterans like y'all, a- y'all, Aver Bush, Lori Lindsay. Um, that's how I met Becky. So like Chris taught me a lot, um, soccer wise. I love that. Full circle, baby. Yeah. Um, all right. Last one. Bucket list item for this year in D.C. or in life for 2022. Anything? I want us all to go on a trip together. That would be very fun. Doesn't even matter where. I think that would be a great experience. Should we go camping? I think we should go camping. I literally don't no. care what we do. <gasps> what? You would or you wouldn't? Why would we not oh go gosh, to like I Mexico and like the beach? Like it's like summer. Well, that would be difficult. One, Why? logistics. Two, camping seems easier. We've yeah. talked about... A country concert. That has been a topic of conversation. Oh, that'd be fun. Another topic around... (laughs) 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 What? (laughs) Where Andy Um, will drink water. Line dancing. (laughs) Have you heard that? Um, Sam Staub has talked about line dancing. I brought that up. Was it you? There's a brewery out here. Yeah. Yeah. It does it. Brewery out here. At Leesburg. (laughs) All right, line dancing. Trip. Uh... Anything? Uh, I want to go on a boat for the 4th of July if we're here. We're not here, are we? We hopefully won't be here. We hopefully won't be here. But we could do a postponed 4th of July. I want to get on a boat boat, on the Potomac. Cool. Love it. (laughs) I want to be on a boat. All right. Well. That's a wrap. Girly Pops. Uh... It's been a long day. The pops. And this has been really fun. Thanks for being my first in-person guests. That's so thanks for being my oh, teammate. We didn't have a choice. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. You didn't. She paid us to be here. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> she split that check. I'm actually probably gonna bring banana chocolate chip muffins. <gasps> yeah. Tomorrow? Uh, probably not tomorrow. Um, um, maybe Saturday. But hey, thanks for being here. Thanks for being my teammates. Thanks for being my friends. Love you all. Scene.
All right, and to everyone listening, keep your eyes on the Just Women's Sports and Washington Spirit social channels because we are giving away tickets to our game for Sunday, May 15th against Angel City FC at Audi Field where we will beat them. The Players Pod wouldn't be possible without our partners at WIS. WIS helps entrepreneurs and business leaders fulfill their potential by turning temporary roadblocks into long-term wins. No matter your business needs, WIS is ready to team up and take your company to the next level. So head to WIS.com to learn more about how they can help your business on its championship journey. That's W-I-S-S dot com to find the teammates you need to accelerate your dreams and achieve your business goals today.